waiting for people to show up. It's like we have nine people, so I think it's safe to get started. So, hello everybody. I'm gonna lose my face and we'll get started on these cards. Oh, it's 7 p.m., so I did do it wrong. Okay. Yes, you can share the live. The more the merrier. Let's make sure where you share it, if you don't share it in a group, make sure you're allowed to share it in a group. We don't want to get in trouble. Okay. <clears throat> Today, we're doing ink smooshing, which, like I said, is my favorite thing in the world to do. We're going to attempt to make these three cards. Of course, they won't be exactly like this because ink smooshing does not allow for you to repeat anything. So I'm going to move these over here where I can see them for reference. And we're going to be using two distress inks, regular inks, not the distress or not the um, oxides because I don't want the chalky look to them. Um, so we're using Salty Ocean and Twisted Citron. Can you see that? There we go. I need to get my comments over here so I can see. Sharing it in your group. Okay, yes, that's awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> and then I'm using a Lindy Starber spray in Hydrangea Blue. And that's going to give us the sparkle. And then I'm going to do it in three different card stocks so that you can see the difference. So most of the ink smooshing that I do, I use just Canson watercolor paper, um, cold press. But I also sometimes like using this um, Ink Essentials specialty stamping paper. It's super smooth and it's kind of, it's a matte finish, but it's it just the ink lays on it different than it does on the watercolor paper. And then I'm also going to do... Um, Distress Heavy Stock, where that um, has a little bit of a different look to it as well. Now the difference, the main difference with these two, and I think you can probably tell here, is how white these are compared to the watercolor paper. But when we're doing ink smooshing like this, it's not really that crucial. It's not obvious that this is a different color. But I'm gonna start with the watercolor paper first. Now this watercolor paper is, these all might be bigger. No, I think they are. These, um, the heavy stock comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets. So I just cut these down to a two card stock size, four and a quarter by five and a half. And then the ink essential um, card stock actually comes in packs already pre-cut this size. And then I cut down my watercolor paper. However, my sh bigger sheet, the e however I can get even, even pieces out of it. So I'm going to do my lightest color first. And however you do this, you can put all your colors down and smush that way, but I like doing them one at a time because I feel like I have a little, a little bit more control, even though there's not a lot of control going on with ink smushing. Oops. That's it. We just smushed it just like that. And I'm going to dry in between. I know these are my favorite colors, and I, I don't know why. I don't really have anything blue or green in my house as far as my decor or anything, and I don't wear a lot of blue and green, but they're my favorite colors to work with when I'm making art. So I have this down here, and I can either go back in with this, which I might do this way. I might do this. I'll show you what I was going to say in a second. I usually pick up whatever's left on the... On the um, media mat with something else and then I just end up with a whole bunch of different backgrounds. I need some paper towel here. <clears throat> I don't want to waste any of it. We have a quick question regarding the casa. For card making what do you mean? For like the doing backgrounds or for making bases? I, almost everything that I use is matte. Heat embossing makes me, yeah. Uh... Well, I'm glad you're brand new learning. Welcome to the club. Um, matte. 
I would say matte because you can do a lot more with matte stuff than you can with uh, shiny stuff, shiny cardstock. Okay, now I don't particularly care for the way that looks right now, so I'm just going to put some water on here and help move that around a little bit. I also could just dab it off if I wanted. Because I don't want it to be really dark. I want it to just be kind of subtle in the background. There, that helps. Use some more water on here, make it a little bit more fluid. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm not going to use this on this cardstock, so I'm going to just get another piece of cardstock. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to use that on this card background. I'm just going to pick this up because I don't want it to go to waste. And sometimes when we use what's on the table, it ends up looking better than what I started with in the first place. It's almost like doing a ghost print on um, when you're doing jelly press printing. Okay. And then I'm gonna, I want a little bit some darker speckles and some sparkle. So I'm gonna put some of this down. I need a pipette. Here we go. I might be able to just do it from this. Nope, not enough. Okay, I gotta be careful because that's really dark color here. So I'm gonna spread that around a little bit. And now I'm just gonna be real careful. I'm just gonna barely touch it. Okay, and I think I'm gonna use this. Pick up the majority because I used too much ink. In the end, it's not going to matter much because it's the background. We're just trying to make it look pretty. You just do it until you like it. And sometimes I do, I just do so many, so many. Because number one, I'm, you know, to, when I come to do these or if I'm doing videos or whatever, it's like, oh, yeah, your color combinations are so great. It's not because it just naturally comes to me. I don't just naturally say, oh, I'm going to be using this color and that color and these will go well together. I don't know. I honestly, half the time, don't know what these colors are going to look like together. Other than these two, I use these two all the time. But So a lot of times I'm doing backgrounds just because I need to figure out if it's going to look good or not. Hang on, i got to get some water. I'll clean up my little pipette here so it doesn't get stuck with blue paint. I have a drawer full of cardstock with backgrounds on them. Then I end up doing stuff like this. This is just me figuring out what colors I wanted to use. And then this is me figuring out what colors we're going to use for the flowers to go on here. So, And then, oh, let's see. You just end up with stacks and stacks and stacks of backgrounds. Keep them. These are super handy if you have a last minute card you need to do and you don't want to go through the time of making a background. So that's pretty. I like it. Oh, you probably, I don't know if you can see the sparkle. A little bit. Okay, Michelle. Well, I'm glancing over there anyway. I don't mind answering your questions. All right, so we're going to do that again. And so this one's just sitting over here drying. And I'll just let, I'll use that one later. Or maybe I'll use it to pick up some green in a minute. So I'm going to set this one aside. And now we're going to do the heavy stock. I'm going to do the exact same thing. 
light color first. Water. Now this uh, cardstock absorbs the paint or the ink, the water, a little bit differently than either of the other two. My suggestion is if you go to a big box store or if there's a, um, a local craft store that you go to and you can find these on sale, just to get a pack and try them all out and see which ones you like. I personally like the watercolor paper because it's inexpensive and great, great big um, pads of it. Cut it down and you can use a lot of water so you can go over and over. You can already see, sometimes wonder if I use the wrong I use the wrong side because now this has got, oh, can you see that? It's got little, I don't know if you can tell or not. It's got little bumps, like it's absorbing the water weird. It always ends up looking okay. Just, it behaves differently. It really just depends on what you're going for. This is another reason why it's um, really good to have extras on hand because, you know, if you mess around and use something you don't really like it for your particular project that you're working on right now, you can always grab something else. Do you see those little specks? Those are actually little water droplets. We'll see in a few minutes if that goes away. You saw that I did them both exactly the same and you can see the difference. One's a lot lighter than the other. This one, this is the watercolor. It holds the ink better. Or not better. I don't want to say better. It's different. I'm going to get another piece of watercolor stock here. <clears throat> on the glass mat yes I am working on the glass mat with the I don't know what you call it this little this covering <laughs> I don't know what you call it but it's just like the little one that came with the glass mat it's that same material the non-stick surface that's what I'm using okay and now Thanks, Teresa. These are nice, one of my favorite color combinations. I think that's probably enough. I'm not going to stick it out there with the pipette again because that just is too much, I think. Too much blue. That's the best way to get stuff is on sale. Here in Grand Rapids, um, we have a, an outlet, a craft outlet store. There's a major um, craft distributor here in town and they have an outlet store. So things that like go back to stores like Michael's and Joann's and Hobby Lobby and the packaging might be damaged or they bought it and they tried it and they didn't like it. It goes to this outlet store and it's deeply discounted. And when I very first started um, crafting, where was that? When I first started crafting, that's where I bought all my supplies. And I, so you never know what you're going to get every time you go in there. Stuff's different. But it's the best, best way to get stuff. Okay, now I'm going to do the specialty stamping paper. Thank you, Valerie. 
Uh, now you can probably tell right away already how that is sitting. It's kind of sitting there. So the surface of this particular card stock is, I don't know what to say. There's like a coating on it. It does absorb and it will dry, but it sits on it different. And I do like to look, use get up here um, this cardstock on occasion. But the caveat to that is that it's a little expensive. So I would love to be able to afford to use this on everything, but I can't. Again, it also dries a little bit lighter. I'm going to go back in because I want a few more dots. There we go. And if this isn't perfectly dry when you go into your next ink, that doesn't matter because the water is going to activate it anyway, so they will blend a little bit. I just dry it to make sure I, I like what it looks like before I go dipping it in again. Dipping it in again. Well, the thing with Marketplace, um, yeah, I would be afraid of that too. <laughs> uh, sometimes get deals. I see people that get deals there all the time. I also find things at like Goodwill and thrift shops. I've gotten lots of stamps and some uh, different supplies from there, so that's some place to check too. Unfortunately, crafters... You know, they change hobbies. They might get ill and not be able to do their hobby anymore. And so their family doesn't know what to do with all of their stuff, and then they donate it. So some of us can benefit from it. Uh, I'm not sure I like that. That's probably good for that color. Let's we'll keep picking this up. And these are our little scrap pieces and they're just as pretty as the ones that we started here, aren't they? I could be making four cards right now, which I probably will at some point. Five cards actually. All right, and now our pretty sparkle blue hydrangea. It is addicting, Valerie. I could just do this all day. It's sort of, I feel the same way about doing um, jelly press prints because you just print, 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 and you end up with this giant stack of papers. You're like, what am I going to do with all of that? Same thing with this. I can just do this all day. All right, Michelle, I hope you feel better soon. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside because these puddles are full of mica. And I don't think you can see right now, but when they dry, they'll be super, super shiny and sparkly. So I don't wanna sit here and blast it with the heat gun. Um, and I don't want to dab it up with paper towel, so I'm just going to let that dry on its own. So I'm going to sit it off to the side with these ones. And I'm going to pick this up. Okay. So that's the backgrounds. And now, because I did these two sample ones over here, um, I'll decide which ones I want to use for the cards when I get ready to assemble them. All right, next thing we're going to make 
There's, there's the fun part of playing with ink. Next thing we're going to make is, and I should clean this off before I move to the next thing, is the, uh, the little flowers, the back or the cardstock for the little flowers. All right. So these flowers here, they're going on these cards. They're going to be a solid color, so I don't need to worry about, I don't want to ink smush them. I'm just going to spray them. And it doesn't matter what cardstock I use because you're not going to see it. It doesn't matter how white it is. You see inside here okay? Move some things around. All right. I love flowers too. I tend to do flowers. I actually I tend to do flowers a lot more in the fall and the um winter than I do in the summer just because I miss them so much. I'm going to get this card stack a little bit wet and then here I'm going to be experimenting with I've got two blues uh, Distress Mica Stain Wonderland and Tumbled Glass which are two kind of light blues and then for the stem part Peeled, peeled Paint Distress Spray Stain and then Dilution Shimmer Spray in Fresh Lime this fresh lime color kind of goes with this twisted citron and then these blues go with the hydrangea so I'm just trying to bring those two colors into the flowers so I'm gonna start at the top and I'm just spraying just a little bit oh, gotta show you I should have just before I started the live so you don't have to stand sit there and watch me shake a bottle and I'm gonna end up doing two of these I think because I don't think that my three flowers will fit on one uh, one piece so I'm gonna do two just to be safe and in case it ends up I don't like the way they turn out. I can redo them. Okay, and this has got a little bit. Of, it's very close to the other color, but it's got sparkle in it. Be really diligent about keeping these little tips clean. Nothing worse than getting your little ball out and going to spray with it, and it's it won't spray. Oh, you're welcome, Linda. Yes, get your paint, get your paints out, your inks. Sometimes when I'm feeling create, not creative, but when, I, when I'm feeling like I want to be in my studio, but I have no idea what I want to do, that's all I'll do. I'll just pick some colors that I like, and I'll start ink smushing, and for somehow it just ends up turning into a craft session because you can't not play with you can't play with ink and not be inspired. Okay, and then I'm going to use some Distress at the very bottom, just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to soak it, soak it down, get it to move. Because in this case, I don't want any of the little specks. I want it to just be solid. Solid... Um, kind of base of color. And I want more blue than I want green, so I'm actually going to use this Distress Spray right here. It's dangerous doing this outside of my box, but I'm doing it anyway. There we go. And I'm going to dry this while it's moving so that I can kind of stop it in its tracks. I mean, hardly see that 
peel paint down there at all. So I'm going to maybe put a little bit more of that in there. Whoa! That's all right. Let me get a paintbrush. I'll just use a junky, whoop, a little junky paintbrush and try to move this around a little bit. I'm not trying to be particular, I just want some of that, that darker green to show up down there. How do I know how long the bottles need to be shaken? Well, um, the ones with the mica in them, you can see that there is, well, you can't with that one. Let me get one that's not shaking. So can you see that little layer of mica at the bottom? You can see it there. So when I shake it, that starts to disappear and it just turns into paint. Do you see that? So when all that mica is mixed into the water. So there, now it's just, now it's just paint. It's getting there. That's how I know. Okay, I'm tilting this to get some of that green down there. And then what I'm going to do is hold it up to here and see if that is a good complement and needs more blue. So I'm going to put more blue in there. Sometimes that uh, limey green color kind of takes over. And of course you could always, I mean, I'm just doing this with sprays just because I like playing with the sprays, but you could use watercolor paint. Um, you could ink smush this if you wanted. You could do a bar of blue and a bar of green, a bar of brown, you know, with your ink stamps on the, on your mat. Certainly don't have to be as fiddly with it as I'm being, but I like being fiddly with it. I like to apply and use acrylic so you can see, oh yeah, yeah, doing it upside down. There's somebody from the UK, I can't remember her name that I've seen, and she calls it ink smooching. So she's using the plastic to push it down onto the paper. And I do do that sometimes when I'm trying to be a little bit more particular about where it goes. Okay, now I've got some dots of spray down here. I'm just going to do that with the watercolor because I want that down there. So now I'm going to try this without getting the paper wet, and let's see what happens. Yes, mixing these paints is like mixing chocolate milk. Good, good example. Okay, I'm gonna come down a little bit further with the blue this time. And I think I'm gonna be super, um, frugal with the green, the light green. I don't want very much at all. Come on. Just a little spritz. There we go. There we go. Good enough. <clears throat> now I'm going to leave those uncovered just in case i got to use them. There we go. There, yeah, I might like this one a little bit better. That's kind of what I wanted. My dark green though still just like gets overwhelmed by that, by that limey color. All right. Oh, I don't know. I doubt you can see this, but just the way that that moves, you can see it. It's like little, little waves of 
sparkle. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. So I like the way that looks. Okay. So I'm going to take another piece of watercolor paper because we have wet ink in this box. And I'm going to pick that up. Whatever happens, happens. I don't know, that might be something someday. We'll just set it aside and let it do its thing. Okay. These have to dry completely before I die cut them. So I'm going to let them just sit here for a minute and dry while I do some other die cutting. Maybe clean my little bottles first. Thank you, Michelle. You're very kind to say. Linda, you like the live better? Really? Uh, that surprises me. I thought that people liked my videos because I wasn't yapping. I, see, I hear that a lot. Oh, I'm so happy to watch a video and you're not talking through the whole thing. <laughs> Is that surprising? Okay, let me dry this a little bit. Well, I'm going to be honest. If it was up to me, I would do lives exclusively. Just because there's no video editing involved. I get to hang out with you guys. I feel like I'm actually teaching things because you're asking questions and I can answer your questions, you know, on the fly. When the video is done, the video is done. But I don't know if everybody would enjoy that. Okay. I'm going to get those out of the way. I know they look super funky right now. Trust me, they're going to look so cool. All right. So I'm going to use the Simon Says Stamp Greeting Trio. <clears throat> some silver cardstock and some white cardstock. So I'm going to go wash my hands a second, try to get most of this off of here. still stain my hands but it shouldn't come off onto my cardstock so just gonna use some <clears throat> stack of paper here some uh, Nina classic crust this is the 110 pound size thickness I want it to be for pretty stiff and I'm gonna do my little background guys, <clears throat> excuse me, in the white. shadows and then I'm going to do each one of these sentiments the thanks get well soon and the miss you and uh, what would be if you, you could make these cards for yourself to send to people or it would also be neat you could make um, like two of each card 
and have them be like this and make it a set and give it away as a gift to a friend and then they have cards already made to send out to people i've done that before because not everybody is crafty like we are all right i'm gonna Okay, I think I've said this before, but it bears repeating. When you're using metallic cardstock, try to only use what your what, where your dies are instead of you know I cut that off instead of running this whole thing through my die cut machine because even the tops of your plates they get marred and that marring will imprint itself onto that metallic cardstock and then you will have ruined that whole piece. So that's why I cut that off. Just a pro tip, as they say on the internet. Not that I'm a pro by any means. I've only been making cards for six years. So I'm still a baby too, y'all. All right. pieces are out of there put this away get these out oh those stuck right to the machine excellent I tell you doing a live today is a lot different than last week I had the windows open it was 70-ish degrees, beautiful outside. Not so much today. I'm actually bummed out because it was supposed to rain all day today and it looks like they got it wrong once again and it's not actually going to rain. It's just going to be cloudy. Why do you keep alcohol in a sprayer, Michelle? What do you use that for? Okay. Um, I'm going to glue these and then I'll bring this back and we'll do our embossing folders. Yeah, sometimes when it stains, though, alcohol doesn't even take it off. I've got some alcohol here. I don't think it'll take it off. It's in my skin. Yeah, it's not coming off. That's okay. I'll probably end up washing dishes half a dozen times today for some reason or another. It'll come off then. All right, I'm going to use my Barely Art precision craft glue. This is my favorite white glue. A couple reasons. Um, I used to use, oh, I can't remember what it was called, art something. Anyway, I used to use a different kind and um, it was hard to get. And I uh, live in Arizona in the winter time. And so that glue, you, they can't mail it in the winter it comes I don't know where it comes from but they can't mail in the winter anyway so it's hard to get and this stuff I think is made in the US it dries fast it's very permanent it's got this excellent little tip that comes with it, it comes with several tips anyway it comes with its own little needle to go inside it's not terribly expensive it lasts a long time all kinds of reasons I like this glue. And of course you could use um, double-sided adhesive on this, run it through a little Xyron machine if you have one. But I like to use a liquid glue because then you can move it around. You have a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of time before it 
sets to get it exactly where you want it to be. Got some weird things hanging off the edge there. Okay, I'm gonna set that there and put a block on it. Boom. There's also um, I've seen places that have like a little little container. I've never tried it, but it's a little container and it's got a sponge in it and there's glue in the tub. So you spread pressure. So you would like take your things and squish it down into the into the sponge. It's another kind of glue you can get. I also use, I love to use um, Beacon 3-in-1 adhesive. That's really strong glue. And I use that sometimes when I, I use a lot in my journals because I'm gluing down thicker things. Um, but I use it for card making too. I like doing backgrounds and things like that. I don't use it so much for this little stuff because the way that it dries, it almost dries like hot glue and it leaves these little cobwebby strings on things. And that bothers me, so I don't use it for that. What did you miss, Iris? 101 in Tucson today. No, thank you. That's still pretty warm. We won't be in Arizona until November. So hopefully it's calmed down a little bit. And I tell you what, I've been looking at the forecast for the U.S. winter. You know, they're forecasting what the winter's going to be like with El Nino or La Nina or whatever Spanish little kid they're talking about at the time. Um, and again, it's supposed to be cold and rainy in the southwest and warmer and not as snowy in the northeast. And that bothers me. <laughs> Last year was not a good year where we were in Arizona. It was cold and it snowed and it rained a lot. And that's just not typical for the desert. I was not happy. So we're hoping that it will be better this year. And I already know that I have to move these because my die cutting machine is going to be here in a second. So I'm going to move these off to the side so they can dry properly without being disturbed. I think I'm just going to put them all under here. There. All right. I'm going to bring this in and out a couple times. I'm sure I'm missing comments because they're flying by. <laughs> Michelle, <laughs> sounds like you have been bitten by the card crafting bug. <clears throat> Ooh, it does look like the Northern Lights. I'm just going back at comments, guys. That's what I'm looking at here. Okay, if I don't say anything to you during the live, I will. I always go back and answer questions after, after the fact. Okay, so I'm going to use three embossing folders this time with this pretty uh, teal colored paper. And this, I'm, I just happen, I have a giant stack of like inexpensive lightweight cardstock that I got at Michael's or something a long time ago. And so I'm trying to use it up. So that's what this is. But you can use any cardstock you want, any weight cardstock. Um, so this one is a Spellbinders embossing folder called Tile Reflection. And all of this stuff will be linked on my blog after the video goes live on YouTube later this afternoon. And I'm using Dibble Dot from Simon Says Stamp. It's got little circles of dots, and then this refractive from Simon Says Stamps, or Simon Says Stamp. So I'm going to, you know what, I did this wrong. I need to cut these down first, don't I? <laughs> yes, I'm going to cut them down first. I'm going to make these two inches wide. I 
Actually, I'm going to make them two and a half, and then I'll trim them down after I emboss them. I'm just going to leave them that tall. See how tall are they? Yeah, five and a quarter. So I probably only need more than one piece of paper, maybe. Looks like. And I'll just do that. Okay, I only need the one piece. Cool beans. Okay, it's back. Don't need that right now. And then these are my embossing folder accoutrements because all embossing folders are not created equal. They're all different thicknesses. Now you probably can't tell in, on camera, but they are, they're different thicknesses. So you don't use the same um, die cut machine sandwich for each one. It has to, you have to kind of figure it out. So I'm squirting, I'm doing this off, away from the camera over my trash can here. I'm just squirting plain water, just a really light mist over the cardstock and just a little bit and that will help make a better impression. It loosens up the fibers of the paper a little bit and it does better. So my platform says to do a 3D embossing folder which is this right here. It says to use this platform then the embossing folder and then my embossing plate which is this and I guarantee you that's not gonna work nope that's not gonna work because that one this one is too thick so that's where I start with these this is another shim that came with this machine I'm not gonna necessarily use that this is just a stack of cardstock I don't know how many sheets I have here six or eight sheets and I start to push it through. Oh, it's going right through like it ain't nothing at all. So I do have to put something else in there. All right, well, let's try the cutting plate. I kid you not, this is the process for every single one. That's not, that's too much too. Okay, let's try this and this. Still no, all right. With this platform and it's different with every machine too what are you doing <laughs> okay that's too thick apparently take one out take another one out there we go you just keep going until you can smush it through All right. And that's why I did it. Oh, that shifted off center. God dang it. All right, I'm doing it again. Hang on. Hold, please. All that messing around with everything. Normally that wouldn't matter, but this has got a vertical and horizontal pattern to it, and I don't want it to be that far off. Okay, let's try it again. Ooh, that sounds scary. There we go. Pretty. Okay. do the other Simon Says stamp folder because I'm pretty sure that this sandwich will work for that. This one's not as crucial if it's straight because it's just dots. Just 
that one. Now the next one is actually Spellbinder's folder, so let's hope that their actual sandwich works with. Their die or their uh, embossing folder, huh? Yeah, we'll see. Look at that. Perfection. That's it for that part. While I've got this out, move this out of the way. Let's cut the flowers. I'm pretty sure that these are dry enough to cut now. Yep. So for the flowers, I am using Sizzix Wildflower Stems Number One. I have all of these. I just love these so much. They're so, I don't know, organic looking. I don't know, I just love them. So they show up on a lot of my cards. So now you can see where I wanted the bottom to be kind of green and the top to be kind of blue. Let's see, let's put that one right there and then I'll use this one for the other flower, the leaf. I'm actually going to put that shim in there because this is a little bit thicker cardstock. Watercolor paper is thicker. And I want to make sure that those intricates, intricate dot, what's happening? I want to make sure those intricate dies. Why is that not going? What am I missing here? Am I missing a part? There's no resistance there at all. Oh, there's my other plate. <laughs> I'm like, what is wrong? This is not right. Anyway, this cardstock is a little thicker. And I want to make sure that the intricate dies cut all the way through. So that shim helps do that. There we go. That's better. And I think I'm gonna go backwards, and run it through again. Just be safe. And then before I take them off, I kind of flip them over to make sure that it cut all the way through, which it did, you can see that it did. If it didn't, I would have just flipped it down and cut it again. But most of these dies are pretty good that way. That's a trick if you ever have dies that don't cut all the way through sometimes. Check it before you take it off and recut. Here we go. Still a little bit damp, so this paper is kind of flexible, but that's okay. I'm going to save this because I can always use these colors to cut something else out. I'm going to use this one right here. I'm actually going to do that at an angle, I think. Because I want more green and blue than, or green and this brownish color than the blue. Being that it's like a leaf, a leaf slash flower. Uh, 
There we go. Now it's time to assemble. Trim my little panels down now. I want this just to be two inches wide. So this gives me an opportunity to trim up the edges. I think that's already five in. It's actually a little less than five and a half. That's okay. We'll trim our we'll trim down our background to fit that. Let's see. Actually, I'm now I'm looking at that. I think I want to cut that off. No, it's just an accent piece, so it doesn't matter what size it is. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so I want this to be two and a half. Or two, I mean. And you save these little pieces, even this one. Um, that can That's good journal fodder right there. And then this one, I think I'm gonna, this card is gonna be, or on this one, it's gonna go up and down like this. So I want room for the get well to be on there. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Make it one and three quarters, a little narrower. I think I probably have to trim that again, but we'll see. Actually, I'm going to trim my um, card bases as well. I need to poke these out too. <clears throat> this is the tedium of card making especially if you're making a bunch of them I did a class a couple years ago where I decided that this was going to be the focal point it wasn't this set of flowers it was another set of these tiny kind of flowers and there were a million of these little things and I cut I don't know how many of these I cut oh so many and there was so much poking those things out we had a really good time though oh, everybody made beautiful cards all right so here's our backgrounds and here's our our um leftover ones, the ones that we were scraping up the extra paint with. Ooh, that's going to be a hard... I actually kind of like this one better than this one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You guys have an opinion? Maybe the one with the more green. This one's kind of nice. I like that one too. This is the one with the, the um, yeah, my mind's, I'm losing my mind for a second. The Distress Heavy stock. And can you see all the little starburst things there? I mean, that's kind of a neat look, but I don't think that's what I'm going for right now. I want it to be more splotchy. So I'm not gonna use that one. You love that one. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to do these three right here. This has got a lot of really pretty sparkle on it. I like that one. I definitely like that one. You know what? 
I have another one that I was messing around with, and I might use that one too, because that one's very similar to this. So how about those three? I keep looking at this because I love that green in there. What do our flowers look like on there? Oh my goodness, so many decisions. I'm just going to make a decision. We use this one and these two. <laughs> this one? Okay, we'll use that. We'll do these. We'll save these ones for later. Okay, these are the ones we're using. So one of them is going to be, I think it's this one. I'm going to make this the whole background of the card. So I'm going to, no, we'll use this one for the whole background of the card. So this one is already five and a quarter, or four and a quarter by five and a half, I believe. Yep. No trimming required for that one. And I'm going to use this that way on there. Like that. And then this one I'm going to, these ones I'm going to make a little bit smaller. So I'll make this one four by five and a quarter. And that'll give us a little bit of a border all the way around. So I'm just going to trim on both sides. I actually want this part down here. Okay. And we'll do our dots. One of these. And this one I'm going to make smaller yet because I'm going to put a little piece of green paper behind it. So I'm going to trim this down to four and an eighth because I want just a tiny little border around this by five and three eighths. Okay, and then this will be, let's see, five. I'm subtracting by three and three quarters. That should give us a pretty decent border around there. Okay, and so then this needs to be three and three quarters tall. So I want it to be the same height as that. Righto, just like that. And then we use that little flower. All right, let's assemble. Same in that. Card bases real quick. I'm using Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock for the card bases. It's super thick. It's very bright white. It's perfect. I'm not going to tape these shut yet because I think I'm going to stamp something in the middle or inside. So if I want to give these away, because now I've already got the other three made, just made these. So this is the perfect set for a friend. If I stamp on the inside, then they don't have to worry about a sentiment. And you could do the sentiment before you even uh, fold them and crease them. I'm doing it after. I get my misty out. So one of them is going to be top fold landscape. And that's going to be the thanks card. So I'm using this My Favorite Things stamp set. It's got some really nice, just simple 
sentiments in it. So I'm going to say thanks. Love you lots. Well, sometimes I get super fancy with the insides of the cards and I almost never show that. I, not almost. I never show that on my videos just because I think it's something that's a personal decision, what you do on the inside of the card. But you could find a really pretty flower stamp that you could stamp in the corner. You could take some of these and glue it to the bottom. That could be glued. And then when you open it up, this copies on the inside. There's all kinds of things you can do. But I'm just going to stamp them with black ink this time. Is this one I want to use? No, I'm going to use this one. So I'm just using a pigment ink here. Just because to me it seems a little to be a little bit sharper or sharper black but any ink works and I just eyeball it I never well obviously you can see it's not right but I could do something to put a leaf in there to make it look better whatever it doesn't matter it's homemade so I'm gonna let that dry Get my little chamois going. Oh, we're running over an hour again. Speaking of that, our thing, I did some research about doing um, our group get together, crafty get togethers. You know, we wanted to do that in a meeting. And the only way that we can do it for free that I can see, if you have some others, other ideas, please let me know is through Google Meet, and um, we'd have to leave it, we'd have to do it for under an hour, which is doable, but the, um, I don't know, that kind of pressure kind of <laughs> worries me. I'll do some more research, but we might be able to do it, we'll maybe, maybe try it and see what happens for less than an hour. Otherwise, it costs money, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure, we'll have to see, um, what the interest is in it first. Maybe we'll do it, maybe we'll do it for under an hour a couple times, see how popular it is, and if everyone enjoys it, and then I might see about paying for a service to do it so we can get together longer. We'll see. Okay, so these ones are going this way. So I'm not sure why I'm doing that. Gotta pay attention to what I'm doing so I don't mess up. All right, get well soon. Sending big hugs. Oh, and I got ink on me. How did I get ink on me? Oh my goodness. And that's why I wear an apron. You never know what's going to happen. And of course, you don't have to use a Misty for this. If you don't have one, you can use stamp blocks. I am terrible at hand stamping. And I like the Misty just because, or any kind of stamp platform, whichever one you have. Um, because if you have to do it again, it's right there. You can go over it and over it. Put that aside. Is miss you. I did love you lots already, didn't I? I could do sending big hugs again. Hmm. Yeah, she's sending big hugs again. She left it where it was. That's the other thing. If you have a, a stamp platform, you can do production line cards really easy. Just stamp and stamp and stamp.
perfect. Okay. Close this up before I ink myself up again. You waste time making decisions too, Michelle. Yeah, that's crazy. The thing is, is I could just use them all. Not, it's not even that big of a decision. Just pick one. They're all pretty. All right. Where's my, there it is. Let's set this aside. Get this out of the way. All right, so now I'm going to tape these shut just so it's easier to put them together without them flopping around. Because if you just fold it in half, yeah, that pops up like that. It's hard to line things up when it's like this. So I just close it with a piece of tape and then take that out after it's done. Do this one first. I wonder if during these lives, if you're allowed to have music playing in the background. We should look that up. That'd be nice if, you know, how everybody gets all freaked out about copyright and whatever. Wouldn't want to get in trouble on Facebook for having not having copyrighted music playing in the background, but that would be nice, wouldn't it? If you had some background music. Okay, I'm going to use some uh, sticky stuff tape on here. That'll be a little bit stronger than the 3M stuff. Only because it's warped from using the heat tool. flat for sure. Where's my exacto knife? I could sing. No, you don't really want to hear that. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to hear that. The only time I sing out loud is if I'm by myself or in church when there's 5,000 other people singing and you can't really hear me. So yeah, that's not gonna happen. And I'm gonna glue this down with glue glue. Reason being, I want the glue to get in all those little nooks and crannies of the embossed panel. love the dimension. And then I'm also going to glue down my flower. Oops. When you're doing intricate dies like this, don't worry about getting glue on every single flat surface of the thing because it's not going anywhere. I'm not going to glue the very bottom of it down because I'm going to trim that off. That's a little long. I'm going to put something heavy on in a second so it'll dry flat. Move along to the next one. Let's see. Okay, this is watercolor, so I'm going to use this tape as well. Oh, Mod Podge brush, that's a good idea. Very good idea. So those are like little sponge, little sponges, right? It'd be easy to clean after. Oops. 
Okay, well, I guess we don't need tape right there. It's not really going anywhere. Getting towards the end of our time together. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Also know that this is where I hawk, I hawk my wares or whatever. <laughs> um, if you want to buy any of the stuff that you're seeing me use, please go to my blog and click on the links there because they're affiliate links and basically, oh shoot. Gonna do it this way. I did it backwards. That's okay. It don't matter. Um, the affiliate links—they don't cost you anything extra. What am I doing? I'm trying to do too many things at once here. But I get a when you buy things, you click on those links and you buy things from those stores, and I get a little bit of a percentage. Oh, this is correct. I just didn't cut it the right size. Okay. Um, you get a little bit of a percentage, and that helps me buy more stuff. Of course, you don't have to. Should have paid attention to how big this was. What did I say that was? Five and a quarter. So the blog post will be linked. Well, my website is linked right here, but the blog for this particular live won't go live until later after I upload the video to YouTube. There we go. So I, that's the only, the only uh, reimbursement, I guess you could say, that I receive from doing stuff like this. I'm not sponsored by anybody. or I do get some things from Spellbinders every now and then, and I do a video for them, or I create cards for them, but that's it, and it's... Not very often. I certainly don't get paid via YouTube. I don't know if anybody gets paid via YouTube anymore unless you've got a million gazillion followers. I've changed the rules so many times. It used to be really easy for creators to go on there and do things and get, you know, make a little extra income to cover their time, but not anymore. All right, enough graping. I'm not graping. I'm not graping. Okay, this is the one that we're going to make. And I think I'm actually going to use glue for this. This three-in-one for this. And I can move it around. And this bottle's getting thick. And I can uh, wiggle it around on there so that it fits on there nice. Okay. Let's swap that out, Let's put this over here. I think this is the full size. Yep. I love that embossing pow folder. Powder? I said embossing powder. This embossing folder. Scoot, please. Um, it looks like old timey wallpaper to me. It's a little bit on the short side, but that's okay. I can always trim the bottom of that card later. Almost done. Almost done. If you're still here, you are awesome.
Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I wish I could talk to each one of you, have a back and forth conversation. Soon, we'll figure out something soon. Okay, well, those are drying. I don't want to forget to cap that. I'm going to put um, little, foam, little foam dots on my sentiments over here. Hi, Linda. Thanks for hanging out with me. Michelle, you're here. It's awesome. It's actually 19 people watching. Wow. Thank you, guys. I hope you're learning something. Hope that at the very least you're being inspired to go into your space and make something pretty. You know what? I think there's supposed to be a dot right there. I think I threw away the dot that was supposed to be there. Hmm. I wonder if I have a gem small enough. I think I do have some tiny little silver dots in here. See if we can do this without getting them everywhere. Oh, right there. Look at that. Look at that. Right out of the very first thing. And where's my jewel picker? There it is. Let's see, is that the small we want that bit, that little? Yeah. Look at that. I'm sure this is saying somewhere that says there's no mistakes in art, there's just opportunities or something. There's a perfect example of that right there. Okay, back to putting foam tape on. I'll let that dry a second. Or foam squares, foam tape squares. <laughs> if you guys are... Um, not members of the Lady Michelle VIP group, go look it up, or I can link it maybe in the comments here when this is over. That's where everybody that wants to try the things that I'm doing or anything really, and they share their makes there with nothing but happy times and no, no negative at all. Negative gets blocked instantaneously, so there's none of that. So please go over there and join that group. And also it's a group where I um, do polls and different things that I can't do on my main page. It's just a smaller group of people. All right, so the thanks is going on this one. Oops. Let's see where we can put this, where it looks best on that background. Here, right here, middle, maybe in the middle. And then I'm going to cut this off down there. And there's card number one. There's so much going on here. I don't think I'm going to add anything. I'm not going to add any sequins or sparkles or nothing because it's already pretty sparkly with the with the pigmented inks or the mica inks and then this one is going to be the get well soon pretty asymmetrical but 
to the, I feel like middle, and that's probably too close to the edge. I do want it to be in the middle of the space again, ish. Last but not least, now of course these cards um, you don't want to just put in the in the mail. Well, in the United States anyway, I don't know how it works overseas. I think they probably still have the same type of mailing machines, but you don't want to just throw it in the mailbox with the regular stamp on it because it will go through a machine and it'll smush all of this stuff and it'll get bent and. It won't look good. So you want to pay a little bit extra and send it non-machinable. Where in the United States right now, I think it's... Oh, I totally did that wrong. Now well, I didn't do it wrong. I didn't do it like I did the other card, but that's okay. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Um, I think it's 99 cents in the U.S. right now to send it non-machinable. And then they just hand stamp it and it goes through the mail that way and then it doesn't get smashed. So if you spend all this time and effort to make something really beautiful, it costs a little bit extra, but it gets to its recipient whole. Okay, so this card right here, I actually did like this, where I did it across like a belly band. I had it right in front of me and still didn't do it right, but now I got two that look different. That's fine. Now here's the Get Well Soon cards. Sort of the same, different backgrounds. And then the thanks cards. So there you go. That's today's craft project. You got anything else for me while we wrap it up? We went an hour and a half. That's not too bad. If you don't have anything else for me, like I said, I'll go back and look through the comments. Um, after the video has gone live and I'll answer as many questions as I can. If you're watching this later, I'm glad you made it. You can still ask questions. I check it all the time. And if you're watching this from YouTube, you can ask me questions in the comments there as well. And I will, I will answer them. And I'll get back with all of you probably next week about the getting together. Not next week, maybe the week after. Um, about what we can do to get together and actually, you know, be a group of crafters together. How that's going to work. So, all right. I guess that's it. Get over here where I can see how to turn this off. You're welcome, Michelle. Thanks everybody for hanging out with me, and I will see you next week. Have a great, have a great week doing whatever it is that you do. Make sure you make something pretty. Okay. <laughs>